Hey, so now although I've talked about the RX Vega 56 by AMD and compared it against Nvidia's offering the GTX 1070 several times by now, some of you still kept requesting a separate standalone video of this matter. So here I am. However, I'll even include overclocked results of the Vega. Which one of these graphics cards should you go for then? Let's dive in. First I'd like to thank Stefan Miller for lending me his Vega GPU for my Vega test runs. So why not take a quick look at these specs. Comparable here are the manufacturing processes, but nobody really cares about that, right? So one of the major differences is the type of video memory. Nvidia goes for traditional GDDR5, AMD opted for the new different type, namely HBM2, which allows for a massive bandwidth. Both cards come with a capacity of 8GB, though. Then there's the significant TDP difference, 210 watts on the Vega 56 and just 150 watts on the 1070. Please do keep in mind that this is the reference design of the Vega 56 and I unfortunately don't have a reference card, the founder's edition of the GTX 1070. Therefore the 1070 has a bit of an advantage over the AMD GPU since this gigabyte version comes with a better cooler and is factory overclocked. Still I'll also be overclocking the Vega card to give you an estimate on what to expect once those AIB cards from ASUS, MSI, Gigabyte and so on hit the market. So you should compare the overclocked Vega with the Gigabyte GTX 1070, ok? So right now the RX Vega 56 clearly doesn't seem to be optimized that well. There's definitely lots of driver optimization work left to be done for AMD, still one can't deny Vega performs well. If you ignore certain hiccups in game titles like Crisis 3, it's a very good 1440p gaming GPU, but so is the GTX 1070 by Nvidia. Keep in mind the 1070 is factory overclocked by Gigabyte, which gives it a slight advantage over the stock clocked Vega GPU. However, once you overclock the RX Vega 56, the performance performance gain is very significant and makes a huge difference on how we should look at this whole situation. In games that don't suffer from driver optimization issues, the GTX 1070 gets beaten. Now that's a nice surprise. That can be seen in Battlefield 1, Far Cry Primal, Rise of the Tomb Raider and if you will maybe even in The Witcher 3. Even though these aren't particularly cards meant for 4K gaming, if it really comes down to it, the Vega 56 seems to be doing better at this high resolution for now. But of course when looking at the current performance offered, ignoring the fact that performance might increase on the AMD side of things soon, well, then the GTX 1070 clearly seems to be the winner overall. In my opinion, a noteworthy drawback for Vega is the power consumption. At stock it's not much higher than what the GTX 1070 by Gigabyte consumes, but once you overclock the RX Vega, and trust me AMD sport partners sure will, then the power draw suddenly increases by a lot. Roughly 40% higher than the factory overclock 1070, that's a lot. But if one doesn't really care about power draw, well then there's another problem, at least at the time of writing this script, the pricing. 
Currently, a Vega 56 reference model can be picked up for 610 US dollars, sometimes more, sometimes less. A factory overclocked GTX 1070, on the other hand, is currently priced at just $530. If you're looking for a GPU to buy now, then it's advisable to go for the 1070. If you can wait to see how prices as well as performance develop in the future and don't care about power efficiency much, you might as well keep an eye out for the RX Vega 56, which could potentially outperform a GTX 1070 in the future. Could. And as always, thanks for watching.